Now, when you think of Lotus, it doesn't take long to start conjuring up images of iconic cars like this S1 Lotus Esprit. I mean, it's a car that came to define a whole era at Lotus. And, well, James Bond had one, for goodness sake. It's a very, very cool thing. But what we tend to forget is that the Esprit's greatest models came in its twilight, towards the end of its life. Well, the Lotus Evora is coming up for 10 years old now, and by history's reckoning, that should make it a prime vintage. So I guess what we really want to find out today is whether the Evora is a bit like a fine wine, whether it's got better with age. Now, there's been varying Evoras over the years. There have been slower Evoras and there are more hardcore Evoras than the GT410 Sport. So is this something of the Goldilocks part of the range, the bowl of porridge that's just right? And I have to say, even driving briskly, the refinement is much better than you'd expect in this car. I mean, of course, you've got the added practicality of having two seats in the back, but once you're up and going, the bumps aren't overly intrusive in the car. I mean, you do thump up against potholes and things like that at lower speeds, but whenever you are cruising or grand touring, as Lotus might prefer, your voice isn't as raised nearly as much as what you might expect. The ride is far from unpleasant and the car feels light in your hands. It's not hard work at all. But you don't buy an Evora simply to waft about in. You buy it because it's a Lotus, and that means it's got a bit of special sauce in its DNA. <laughs> I mean, Lotus must employ witchcraft to create their chassis because this thing is a saint through the bends and an absolute devil out of them. Not only is it outrageously fast, not only is there a wonderful feeling of how much traction you've got, the motion through the chassis, the how rigid everything is, this exceptionally tangible feeling through the wheel of every nook and cranny of the road surface that you go over. The man-machine connection of the gear change even. You don't so much get into a Lotus to drive it. You put it on like a tailored suit. So the headlines, the car is powered by a 3.5 litre supercharged V6 engine producing 410 brake horsepower. This manual car will do zero to 60 miles per hour in just four seconds and go on to a top speed just shy of 190 miles per hour. Slow, this car is not. It's interesting that whilst everybody has gone to downsizing their engines and turbocharging, and that does have its benefits, Lotus have stayed a bit old school. The supercharger means the throttle response is much more linear. It means that the engine is really enthusiastic right up at the top end. It doesn't fizzle out at all. And that noise, God, that noise. <laughs> always held true with Lotus is Colin Chapman's old adage of adding lightness and the Evora was always a light car with its bonded aluminium construction but this GT410 Sport you can take up to another 26 kilos out of it with stuff like this beautiful one-piece carbon roof and the louvers at the back I mean the detailing on the carbon is just beautiful let alone its own weight saving that exterior bodywork has also been reprofiled quite extensively since we first saw it in 2009 and now produces up to 96 kilos of downforce all by itself. In each corner you'll find a set of Michelin Supersport Cup 2 tyres which certainly when you get a bit of heat in really glue themselves to the road and allow you to exploit the mechanical forces that this car has at its disposal. It boosts its agility immensely and thanks to its well sorted suspension the lack of body roll means the car feels really focused. But more importantly, when it's time to bring that fun under control, you'll find a set of AP Racing brakes there to arrest your progress. And not only are they infinitely capable of keeping this car in check, they're really easy to modulate, so you can be really precise with all of your inputs. While well, naturally starting to feel a little bit old now, this cabin is beautifully fit for purpose. Its minimalist attitude just keeps your focus on the driving. And I have to say, 
these sport seats do a great job of holding you in place. You get this third party Alpine touchscreen infotainment display. It also has a reversing camera, which is a bit of a necessity considering all you can see out the back is someone's Venetian blinds. There is something so wonderfully endearing about this Lotus Evora. It's so ready to play, but not in an overly boisterous sort of way. It's just right there. It's at the driver's level. It's exploitable. Unlike a Porsche 911 where you feel that you could really never breach the car's limits on country roads or anything short of a racetrack, this car is just utterly, utterly grin-inducing on these delicious back roads here. And I can't think of anything that feels so light on its feet in this class as the Evora GT410. It's a car that flatters its driver and one that's certainly worth thinking about if the 992 911's on your shortlist but you fancy having a bit more of a giggle. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews visit www.insidelane.co.uk